The State Wildlife Grant Program is made available through the Fish and Wildlife Service and administered by the Alabama Division of Wildlife and Freshwater Fisheries. It's a unique program that allows our agency to focus on non-game species tailored through the State Wildlife Action Plan. Conservation priorities are identified and we emphasize our work on protecting, enhancing the resources for species and greatest conservation need. The goal is to keep common species common and to prevent federally listing of animals that we have in the state. The gopher tortoise has experienced population declines across its range. In Alabama, this species is listed as threatened west of the Tom Bigby River in Mobile Bay and is currently under consideration for a range-wide federally listing by the Fish and Wildlife Service. State Wildlife Grants has given us and our conservation partners an opportunity to conduct an in-depth study on the distribution, abundance, movement patterns, and health of gopher tortoises in Alabama. Well, I'm in the Department of Biological Sciences at Auburn University, and we currently are funded through a state wildlife grant to Auburn University through the Alabama Department of Conservation. And within this state wildlife grant, the objective is to estimate the abundance and the population size of tortoises across the state. An additional component to just estimating the population size is collecting these physiological data and data related to disease presence and abundance. For part of my dissertation, part of my specific degree that I'm looking at is essentially how different levels of disease or being in different sites where disease may be at varying levels, how that affects a few different parameters of the tortoise immune system as well as their baseline stress. Um, we first start by looking for the trails and then once we find the trails they typically lead to a large gopher tortoise burrow. Once we find that active burrow we go through a process of scoping the burrow just to confirm that there's actually a tortoise present there and to do that we have a large um, camera that gets attached to the scoping box and that's just a digital display so that we can basically run that camera down through the tortoise burrow normally 15 to 20 feet deep would kind of be on average the upper limit of where we see the tortoises. Once we confirm there's a tortoise in the burrow, we measure the diameter, we take our GPS coordinates of it, and we actually set our wire trap on the tortoise burrow. So we set the trap and then we just cover it with a piece of burlap so that as a tortoise comes out, he's not sitting in the middle of the sun, stuck in a trap, potentially overheating. We're interested first in getting a baseline stress measure. And to do that, we have to get a blood sample from the tortoise as quick to when we start handling him as we can. Because when we, as soon as we handle the tortoise, he's going to be stressed out by that process. We also often take a scale with us in the field or if we're working close to the trap, we leave the scale at the car so that we get our baseline blood sample in the field. We get our mass of the tortoise as quickly as we can because they often urinate or defecate and that alters their weight. The other parameter we're interested in related to disease is we take a sample from their upper respiratory tract and that's to attempt to isolate a bacteria or a series of bacteria that are known to cause disease in gopher tortoises. I'm working on a disease that has been implicated in population declines in both the gopher tortoise and in the desert tortoise. So I'm looking for prevalence um, and presence of, of pathogens that could cause disease in these tortoises. We actually just use a plastic IV catheter to flush sterile saline in the, in the upper respiratory tract. At that point, we then recollect that sterile saline in a sterile cup so that we have a good washing of what was actually in the upper respiratory tract. From that point, I take that sample and I add a little um, amount of growth media to it. And the reason we do that is that keeps the bacteria alive because we're doing this in a diagnostic context where we actually want to measure if there are live viable bacteria in the upper respiratory tract. From there we divide that nasal lavage sample into three individual tubes and we do that so that we can um, essentially bank them for later analyses as well as we use one tube immediately in the assay. Um, once they've been divided into three tubes we freeze them on liquid nitrogen and that just keeps essentially the, the cells stable and viable for the long term. We also get standard morphological, so essentially measures related to shape and size of the tortoise. So that is how long the tortoise is. There are a couple different measurements we take related to how long they are. We measure how wide they are, and we measure how tall they are. Additionally, on top of that, we take a sample from their toenail, and that just saves us an extra little tissue sample so that later we can look at things like population genetic structure. We can estimate their age pretty reliably up to about 20 to 25 years old. We can actually count each period of annual growth on their scoots. And that's really the exact same process of what trees have. 
where we can age a tree by taking a cross section through it. Once we age them, we actually can take charcoal or just carbon and we, we rub that on those, on that femoral scoot, and then we just stick that on our data sheet so that we have some permanent record of how much each tortoise grew each sequential year. Lastly, we go ahead and we file the tortoise before we release them. And we file them, that just adds a notch to the marginal scoots. And there's a specific pattern that um, we can actually number the tortoises up to or up through several hundred animals so that each individual animal has its own unique identifier. So that if I go back in 20 or 30 years from now and resample these animals, they'll actually still have the same notch pattern. Really managing for gopher tortoises both saves or helps the species that depend on them as well as it's an ultimate umbrella for this other you know, entire ecosystem. It's desirable both from a game and a non-game perspective.